Hey, what's going on? Thanks for coming to the channel. Okay, so today I just want to share with you some stuff that I found. Man, it's it's springtime, so I've been doing a lot of yard work. And uh, I'll tell you what, when you've been writing software all winter and you start, uh, you know, throwing around a chainsaw and trying to move, you, you know, your brain tells your body, do this, and your body's like, sure, okay. And then, like, a day later, it everything's like, what? So, anyway... So I have an update for our CAN application. Uh, we're up to version 1.004. This application, right, I mean, everybody I think knows this is a hacky, kind of funky. I'm trying to get it more legitimate, but for example, this monitor page, I got to fix this. I got to get these. Don't make sense to anybody. So I have to get this to to work. This has potential, but right now it's uh, there, there's there's too much funkiness going on. But right now, what we do is it, what what I I did is I simplified the layout here. The old version there was there was a bunch of things wrong. First of all, I don't think it worked the first time. Like if you just opened it, like if you came in here and you said, oh, "I'm gonna use my fingers, man," and you said just close everything, and then you open it. I'm pretty sure that the uh, the version 1003 um, just would not work the first time that you tried. I don't know. Maybe it won't. Okay, it did work that time. So I think that was a problem. The other thing was I had these six or eight or whatever. Now you just you just you just put in your stuff, man, that you're sending, right? Boom. I don't know. This probably won't work. Do anything. I hope not. What does that mean, 7F? All right, whatever. So this was some kind of crazy thing they sent in. I probably shouldn't do that. Anyway, so now what you can do is, is I still have the memory things. Oh, the other thing that happens now is it will send the header. You don't have, the other, the other version was like, you had to set the ID and initialize it with the ID, et cetera, et cetera. None of that, you don't have to do any of that now. Um, whatever header is here is what's going to get sent out. Like, for example, um, 7DF, and that's what the diag means. Like, if I have some other address in the header, I'm, you know, header, address, can ID, these are all terms, right? Typically in the ALM 327, it's going to refer to these as setting the header. Uh, other places you'll hear it referred to can ID, and even to a lesser extent, you'll hear it referred to as the address, right? Anyways. So just hitting diag, diag, what that does is it brings you to the diagnostic address according to some standard, J something or other, something, 19 something, something, right? 7DF is the diagnostic address. This is what all scanners, so it's just because we all deal with cars and stuff here. So this is basically going to bring you back to that original address. So we know if we run a 0, 100 on um, this address, all of the, well, any ECU that wants can respond. And here, this is my Impala. I have two. The uh, 7E8 is the uh, engine controller. The 7EA is the transmission controller or the powertrain, whatever, whatever. It's, ones that, it's two ECUs at two different addresses. Um, so, but basically what, what and this is going to tie into my other app. What uh, you can do now is if I want to specify, this is a functional address. So if I want to specify, now this is the specific address, the, not the, the physical address of the transmission, which is 7EA. So if I send this data out to just that address, only one ECU should respond, which is 7EA. If I send to, oh, I don't have that set up, so 7E0 is going to the, be the physical address of the power. Now, you guys who are fiddling around with this CAN stuff, right? You're, you're going to have an idea of what processor you're trying to talk to, and there's a lot of different addresses, right? There's uh, lots of addresses you can address. So, 70, yo, I'm just going to save this uh, just so I have everything. So, there's, right, so I have uh, the powertrain address. I'm sending the same piece of data. 
the transmission address, and then of course the diagnostic address. But the key here is this version will now just send this address along. You don't have to play games trying to set the header and then set the data and then set the header and send it and then put the like in the one two button and then another one. Right. So this is much more streamlined. So let's just send this information to the powertrain. OK, so we get a set of data. Remember, the end is 813, right, for the powertrain. So we will change that to the transmission and we will send that. And now notice the eight. Th it's, it's just a. I don't know what these numbers mean offhand, right? But I think you can go look it up somewhere. And uh, but the fact is that we're we're talking to two different ECUs. One is seven E eight, and the other one is seven um, E A, right? And of course, a regular diagnostic just O one hundred asking for the PIDs. Everybody's going to respond. So this is what makes everything a little complex under the covers. Now, if I go into the settings and shut my headers off, and in it, now you have to initialize to get the this setting to take. Now check this out. Uh, oh, the other thing is you can collapse. You got to click this here. It may not be. I don't think it's obvious, but you click this to up, uh, open and close this settings. I, it's just to get it the hell out of the way, right? Once you have that squared away. So what did we do? Oh, we turned the headers off, right? Okay. So if I send to the regular diagnostic address again, you'll get like what you'll see, right? No addresses here, but see now you have no idea where this stuff's coming from. You know, it's like we don't know what ECU is sending this. Now we can still, because if we know offhand, we know 7EO because we saw the other address, right? We saw it is uh, the powertrain. We can still talk to the powertrain, and it'll respond, but it won't. I this is not identified as the powertrain in this data with the headers off, right? So that's why you're going to see the headers. Uh, whoops, you want to have the headers on um, to see what ECUs are responding if you're talking on this uh, diagnostic, which this is not, right? The diagnostic address is 70F. So anyway... So now I'm back with my headers and I'll say, yeah, this is a little, look, man, the app is a little funky. I'm just trying to get this front page to work uh, because I use this to hack out a lot of stuff. And this brings me to a new thing that I found. All right. So let's see somewhere, somewhere. Let me show you guys uh, somewhere over here. Oh, I don't know. You know what? Forget this because I'm not sure what the hell kind of crazy stuff. Uh, anyway, let's. Um, all right, my, what, what am I trying to. What, what, what's my point here? My point is that there was a pit. Okay, there was a pit. It was. Let me just look. See, I don't even know where it is. In, in, uh, you know, it's like. Uh, what's the number? It's the transmission for the GMs 22-1940. Okay, so. 22 see now you can just type it in right this is a pid for the gm so i'm going to send this to the regular diagnostic address i'm going to make this my that memory i'm just going to save this so i'm going to send okay now in my app i have a thing where you can create your own user pids you can put in your number but i don't give you a processor so right here i have two I'm not sure what my app does. It may give you the first, or it probably gives you the first one that it gets, the value for the PID, which is going to cause confusion for people or just problems. So one of the things I have to do right away, or this is my next order, I have to drop everything in terms of the software and add a, right, what am I talking about? I'm talking about over here in this, so in, in you know, this application that I wrote, that I keep showing everybody. Uh, if you come into the user pids, come on user pids, and I go to edit one, there's nothing in here about the processor. You have the ECU address. So I'm not sure, I think I'm just retrieving whichever the first one is that responds. So while these work and they'll work most of the time, there's gonna be cases where somebody's gonna come up to my software and they're going to, and, and this is the usefulness of this CAN software. And they're going to say, hey, look, you know, I'm putting in this PID. 
and maybe they're expecting like 70a is the transmission and you know what happens i think this may flip around it's it's not necessarily one or the other is going to get here first 70a may get here first so it's going to look real f it's going to be really annoying yeah you know, this is where people say oh it's magic and you don't know what's good no it's because of bad developers like me so what i have to do is i have to create what I have basically have here where when you send out your PID right you can specify right so so I have to make you when you enter your PID I have to make you enter some kind of a header for it right for example if this PID is intended for the transmission then the header here is gonna have to be what 7 uh, E2 and you're going to have to know that, you know, for the other app if, if, you're, if you're doing the PID. So I send that. Now I should have one response. See that? See, any, any user PID you create should only have one response. So that's a, that's a, I don't know, is it, is, yeah, it's a shortcoming. It's a bug. Well, it's kind of working, but it, then it's giving you stuff, but it's not giving what you want and that's a bad thing for me to do as as a product developer so that is my next order of business but anyway so the, here's the can commander now you can really target um, you know your your can address and you can just type in your data here right this is only gonna accept hex right you'll you'll get a and e and you know you'll get your hex data in here um, and then you can send it and of course this memory thing if you're not familiar this is just yeah no data this is just so you can once you get something set up you can just sort of memory you know like on the radio the old time and if you want to cancel it just hit memory again and then you can just go back and you're good all right so basically and this thing is kind of wacky i tried to explain i'm going to fix this i'm going to make this more straightforward this uh listen thing you know it's like what is it doing here you know the buffer full is because it's not narrowed down enough uh, in terms of the data. And I didn't explain this. I shouldn't even, you know what, you shouldn't have to understand what this is because it's too wacky of a thing. So I have to just fix this. I don't think there is, is this getting anything in this grid. Yeah, it's not even able, you know. The thing is you have to, in order to not get that buffer full, you have to filter it so that the data that's coming in, it can handle that's the best I can explain it and you know as far as I can understand it but this front page is very handy very useful and that's how I found the shortcoming in my software so here it is version 1.004 you know this was another long video I, th I feel like it was kind of long anyway I'm trying to just get this out there uh, have at it man it's already up at the website go ahead and um, you know links below and of course uh, I'll put links to my other software here which uh, you know I have to add the next feature is I have to add to the user pids oh by the way I created this uh, pay, a paid version up there I updated the version by one it's at 1.228 but I have to customize it because now the um, ad version doesn't allow you to clear DTCs but I want the link that you click on for the uh, software to actually allow you to clear DTCs just because you watch this video I want to give you something I mean I'm asking for $2.99 for, <laughs> for this stupid app what the hell you know where you can just add unlimited user PIDs and and clear uh, but here I want to give you that special version I want to give you somewhere in between I certainly don't want to cheat the people out who actually paid for something for my app so they always will have to have something it's a priority for me that if somebody's actually giving me money for something I'm gonna give them a little bit more than obviously something that's free right I mean come on that makes sense right but here uh, my special version for watching the video I want it's gonna somewhere in between that annoying ad version and the full blown out version right so that and that's gonna you know evolve and change shape as I, I uh, keep features going but I want to make sure that I have some kind of nice free uh, something for people to use oh and by the way this can stuff is this is all once we figure out how to get some bi-directional stuff going on you're gonna pretty much you should I at least I expect that it's gonna be just a matter of entering the right codes sent to the right processor 
and that should give us some bi-directionality and then maybe we can even create an app where we can sort of create our like we have user pids where we can create our own user bi-directional pids wouldn't that that would be pretty cool right this is fantasy land at this point um but you know i'm not dead yet so here we go right there it is version 1.004 and i finally centered the words and stuff so anyway thanks for coming by appreciate it man hope you have a great day and um yeah man that's pretty much it take care